Welcome to the Senior Woman Leader Podcast, presented by NAIA RISE. RISE is about respect, inclusivity, support, and education. The NAIA Senior Woman Leaders are the highest-ranking females within NAIA athletics departments, and this podcast is dedicated to develop our female administrators specifically in leadership and management of college sports. Connect, learn, and grow. All right. Um... Why we get started and Paige for the next one. Um, I would love Alicia and Rob to share a little bit more about themselves right quick and then um some of their roles with their um ASA. So Alicia, I'll start with you first. All right. Hi, I'm Alicia. I'm the assistant AD for sports information um at SWL here at LC State in Idaho. And I have um been over our ASA group for this will be my sixth year at LC so my fifth year leading the group I was helping out with it my first year um, which was just its second year so we've only had our ASA group for about seven years now but we've been pretty active in those seven years. Hi everyone uh, Rob Cashel I'm the commissioner of the Cascade Collegiate Conference and um, I've been in the NEI now for 30 plus years as a athletic administrator been with the conference now since uh, 2012 and we actually started our conference um, now called ASA previously SAC uh, upon the inception of it with the national office and the framework so we've been at it a while and had um, various levels of success uh, and but excited to talk to this group today and also learn more um and so we'll we're going to kind of give you all three levels of the asa throughout the nai so i'm going to share a little bit about our national asa then um, Rob's going to talk about the the conference level and what his looks like, and then Alicia will um, talk about the campus level. So that way you're kind of getting all iterations of the ASA. Um, this is very informal, so please, at any point you have questions, please put it in the group chat. I'll be monitoring that as we go along. Um, and then any questions, struggles, things like that, we would love to hear those and, and help you navigate through some of those conversations. So the national ASA, um, kind of is the over, I would say the, the umbrella ASA group. And so we have representatives from each of the conferences um, that represent the national ASA. A lot of the conference commissioners are the ones that kind of um, assign and nominate those individuals to our national ASA group. Um, they do meet on a, on a regular platform um, and come together. So overarching the, the rep, their whole point is basically to serve and be the voice of all student athletes throughout the association. And I really feel like we have some amazing young individuals that really do a good job of that and making sure that all individuals feel like they're representative. So um, Paige, if you wanna go to the next one. We also really try hard with our national ASA to make sure that they are really the ones that kind of drive that ship, that they are the ones advocating for themselves and figuring out what that looks like for them throughout the year. Um, so it is really an, a leadership opportunity for them. At the national ASA level, um, they kind of vote on who they want to be the chair. So individuals that do want to represent the group and be the chair of the committee, they actually have to kind of go in front of the, the whole entire group and express why that is. And then they vote in real time on who the chair is. And then after that, the vice chair. So our current structure, we have the chair of the ASA, which this year is um, Abigail Wickham from William Carey. And then we have vice chairs as well and then we have a secretary and so that's kind of the executive board i would say for our national asa our the group meets on a monthly basis um at least once a month it's typically either the first or second sunday of the month and we meet um in the evening and so that has been really successful our exec committee also meets um on top of that so they might meet a few minutes before the the entire um, asa committee meets just to kind of go over things. They also are the ones that set the agenda. They rate the meeting minutes. They're the ones that kind of really facilitate their own committee. And um, we at the national office are their liaison. So we really help them through that process. So um, the coordinator of the student athlete experience and development position is really the main liaison for this group. Um, Ty is no longer with us. He went to Park University and we wish him all the best. We have hired a new individual. Her name is Glenn Kelly and she'll be stepping into that role later this month. So I'm excited for her to get to know 
um, our ASA members and, and carried the group forward. So Paige, thank you. So some of the accomplishments, I'm really proud of our national ASA, especially over the last um, couple of years, they've been working really hard towards some really great initiatives. The, the main one that they've worked really incredibly hard with, along with our Council of Student Athletes and our Athletic Trainer Association is passing of the mandatory day off legislation. And to say our ASA has been working on that for years is a true statement. They've really been working on that legislation for years. And so to finally see it come to fruition was a really big deal to them. Um, and so kudos to that amazing group. Um, they've also um, helping to build conference and campus ASA groups. So we're really trying to curate and create resources and tools available to help student athletes um, take this back, right? So what are you learning at the national level that you can bring back to your conference? And then also what can you bring back to your campuses as well? Um, they continue to push and focus on their own mental health and physical wellness. And so again, we'll continue to focus on a lot of those initiatives throughout this year. Um, they were pivotal in helping me create the mental health toolkit that is currently on the NAIA's website. And so we really look to them to make sure that we're hitting the mark. Um, and then also promoting and participating in the room. So that's our leadership series. They were a huge part in one, being focused on some of those episodes, but two, really kind of helping us make sure that the content is meeting the needs of our student athletes. So that's just a little bit of what they focused on the last year. Um, the ASA toolkit is something that we created just kind of help give some groundwork on how to start an ASA at any level, whether that's campus conference. And so I'm going to share my screen and I'll share um, kind of where this lives on the NAI webpage. So if you go to st current student athletes, um, it'll take you, ASA is one of the options. So you can go straight to the associated Association of Student Athletes. And the very first um, item up is the ASA Toolkit. And so you can download this book, but hopefully it provides all the things that you need um, to kind of see what, what it entails to create an ASA and to make it a, a really a, a powerful, hopefully, committee for yourself. So you can see mission statement, sample constitutions, um, structure of how the ASA is set up, and then best practices, right? Like how do you sustain your efforts? What are some things that you can focus on on a regular basis in your ASA to, to engage um, conversations? And something else we'll be adding to this toolkit is also the strategic roadmap. And we literally just implemented this with the Cascade Conference and I'm really excited. I thought it went really well. Um, and I don't wanna dive in it too much because I want um, Rob to kind of share a little bit about that process as well. So. I'm gonna stop sharing page. Okay, in the next slide I have conference level ASA Cascade Conference ASA. So do you want me to share that screen? Um, Rob, do you want that or you want me to take you to your website? Uh, no, let, let's start here with the okay. with this slide. Okay. Well, thank you. And, and again, um, uh, as Sarah alluded, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about her coming out and working with us through a strategic roadmap. But just to give you a little bit of background on the conference level ASA, and we're getting used to uh, our rebranding or, and our new name. So if I if I say SAC, it's uh, out of 10 years of habit. Um, but we, we uh, went through a rebranding this summer, and we wanted to align with the national uh, ASA. So we have rebranded to our conference uh, Association of Student Athletes. As I mentioned, we started ours back in 2013, uh, really right on the heels of when uh, the national organization started the Student Athlete uh, Association. Uh, one thing that was key for us, in my mind, was to get presidential buy-in right away from our conference level. So at one of our COP meetings, um, presented this to our, our Council of Presidents, and asked for not only their endorsement of it, but really put some teeth behind it. So we made it uh, in our bylaws, we made it an, an advisory committee uh, within our bylaws. And then also what they agreed to was that annually they would ensure that their department would have the funding to make sure that the two representatives from each institution could attend our annual summit. So those two things were really big for me because I wanted that presidential buy-in. 
I wanted the student athletes to know that they had a voice at the table uh, as an advisory committee. And then like all of us with uh, small institutions and limited resources, there's always a there's always another need uh, out there. So we wanted to codify that the presidents support this and, and we're going to bring our bring our student athletes together. Um, the structure of our ASA is very similar to that of the national. We do have a chair and a vice chair. Um, we also had an advisor and Sarah Freeman, who's on the call today, is a longtime employee at Bushnell University. Associate AD, now the SWL as well. Um, she served as my advisor to our, our conference ASA for a number of years, um, did a tremendous job and, and, and oversees their ASA on their campus. A couple of years ago, um, Sarah took a step back from that role um, like many of you on the call, if you're if you volunteer and you're good at stuff, we ask you to do uh, not one thing, but five things and maybe 10 things. Um, so Sarah is that type of person. And so she continued to be recognized, uh, not only within our conference, but nationally, et cetera. Um, so with that, what what uh, interesting when she stepped back, it allowed us to reevaluate um, our advisor position. And I recently hired a new director of communications who was an NAIA former student athlete, um, was on her campus uh, ASA. So now Courtney Blummer is our new advisor. And that has brought, brought a whole new dynamic to that group because she's not that far removed from being in that chair. And, and that, that has served us really well as we've uh, began to move forward under our new structure. Um, functions of our uh, campus, or excuse me, of our conference ASA. Paige, can you go ahead and go to the next page? So uh, our, our functions, we, we tried to, again, really lay out what we believed our functions were, uh, discuss and provide feedback um, on issues that uh, are affecting our group. Uh, another key thing is we wanted to make sure that we were in a position to assist in the education uh, of our student athletes of not only our conference um, issues, but NAI issues. So as an example, um, when legislation comes out each year, the 90 days before convention, we make a point of making sure that that legislation gets in the hands of our of our ASA and we talk about it at one of our meetings. So they are well versed on what are the issues, um, um, how does a bill become a law, if you will, uh, from a standpoint of this is the process that decision making is going to happen. And then we ask for their feedback on certain things. So we wanted to make sure that they understood the process and, and how to engage within that process. Um, we also wanted to certainly promote student athlete participation in their department wide uh, champion of character programs. And uh, like most institutions, uh, there, there's a wide array of how they go about doing that. So we are not prescriptive in any way of what uh, a campus needs to do, but we certainly want to be supportive of that and, and promote that. We also wanted to provide a good forum for addressing any student athlete concerns. So what's uh, next on our page is actually um, the, the ink is, is still drying, drying because our uh, our, our CSA, uh, or excuse me, our ASA, can you go back one page? Uh, they just created this new mission statement uh, on Sunday. Um, so that was part of our strategic roadmap that, that Sarah led us through. And it was uh, creating a mission statement for our group and then also uh, creating goals, et cetera. So we're, we're really excited about that. I need to that. see what We are really excited about uh, the direction that we're going. Um, moving on to the strategic roadmap, uh, I, I would say historically from a conference perspective, and I have a number of uh, colleagues on the, on the Zoom today, so maybe they will agree or maybe they've done it much better than we have, but we've, we've been pretty heavy programming at our fall meeting and then also as we've gone through the year. And I think the programming has been very good, but what we've lacked is being able to maintain that enthusiasm and maintain that kind of uh, structure all the way through the year. 
So what we did this year is instead of any programming, we took the opportunity to goal set and, and have a strategic plan for the year. And I think, um, again, while the programming in the past has been wonderful, I think that I feel like we have a much clearer purpose uh, walking away from our Sunday event than we have maybe ever uh, in terms of these are our goals. This is what the, the student athletes want to accomplish. And now it's about implementing uh, those action items related to the goals. So I, I can't uh, I, I can't speak highly enough about uh, Sarah's uh, implementation of the strategic roadmap as well as our student athletes really bought into it. Another thing that was unique to our, our meetings anyway, um, was our SWLs met for the first time in person uh, at the same, uh, on the same day. And then our athletic directors were asked to come at the end of the SWL and the ASA meetings and hear a report from both groups on what they what they talked about, um, what were the goals, what is the structure, and then we broke down into small groups where the student athlete representatives could sit with their athletic director and their SWL and talk about what are their goals for their campus, because in addition to the conference roadmap part of the day was okay you have this conference roadmap now let's drill down even deeper and what are your goals as your two uh, asa representatives on your campus and then they were able to share that in real time with their athletic director and their swl so i think we had a, an unbelievably successful uh, day and uh, this is something that i plan on continuing um, and, and if you if you haven't done it um, at, at the conference level, I think it's well worth the exploration with Sarah. And again, I think this would be a wonderful tool for either uh, your conference SWLs and certainly your your ASA on your campus as well. So it, it was fantastic. And, um, you know, we like many of our conferences, we have a, a, a pretty wide geographical footprint. So bringing them together uh, multiple times throughout the year is really not um, it's not a possibility, so we have to take advantage of, of the time we have together. And, and I think this was time well spent and may have been one of our more productive um, ASA meetings. Hey, Rob, this is Regan. I, I just want to follow. Hi, buddy. How are you doing? Long time good. To see. Nice to see you. Oh, good to be seen. I just wanted to follow up with, um, so you know, we were with our our, our students on, on Sunday, and then our our ASA met yesterday for the first time this semester, and um, it was really encouraging. Just my conversation with them Sunday to see them get back, still be engaged, still be excited, and then to start talking about the goals of the conference and then the goals of what they want to see happen on campus. So I think that um, while the programming has been really good in the past, I think the direction and, and the roadmap, um, because you always have turnovers in these student groups. I, so I think what, what you and Sarah provided was truly invaluable. And I see our, our two students came back and were excited and like, here's how we can do this better. Here's how we can make this a, a difference on our campus. So uh, kudos to you guys for this different direction, but it was it was fantastic for our students. Well, thank you, Regan. And, and another thing I would mention about this was uh, the goals that they came up with. Um, you know, we didn't lead them down that road. They, they came up with it on their own. Um, we really pushed them to, to take ownership of it uh, and not just listen to Sarah, myself, or Alicia, who sat in as the CSA national rep or Courtney but really um, take ownership of this. We, we pushed them to follow Robert's rules and you know, vote on things and, and do it in a way that, that they felt like, hey, um, we're gonna own this. The other thing I would mention is, is just uh, if you're overwhelmed by it, and I know sometimes I get overwhelmed by it, but there's so many resources that the NAI has already got available to us. So as an example, um, 
continued training in mental health uh, awareness. You know, Sarah, at some point, will the, the national office will be talking about our new partner. And, and there's just a lot of resources that we don't have to recreate the wheel. Um, we can lean on our national organization for the toolkit and for other things that are already there and available to us. And then the only other thing, um, I'll just share my uh, screen really quick. One of the things that I found effective from a conference level is to make sure that your ASA is, is recognized on your conference page. So we have, a, we have a page for our ASA on our conference page. It has their mission statement. It has the functions. Um, we actually placed all of the campus day off policies here. So um, they're kind of a one stop where they can go and look at them if they need to. And then we have um, we have links to all of our members um, and and from uh, you know as an example it links right to their campus page. So that's it for me. I think Sarah. Yeah, we'll let uh, Alicia take it from here. Thank you, Rob. All right. I mean, a lot of the stuff that Rob just talked about it's really similar at the campus level. Um, but yeah, my three main points for creating and sustaining a successful ASA group on campus level, the biggest piece is the people. I mean, you have to have the right people in the group in order to make it impactful and make it last. Um, and ways I do that, I mean, I talk to our coaches, um, being the SID, I get to know our student athletes really well and I get to know all of our coaches really well. And I know that, you know, I know the athletes, obviously the coaches know their athletes better. So being able to pick their brains and say, hey, who would want to be in this group? Who do you think would benefit this group the most? Um, and just working with them each year when we do have athletes graduate or leave. Um, and another big piece is making sure you have a voice for every program. So we have two reps per program. So a men's tennis player, women's tennis player, two baseball players. Um, and it goes like that throughout all of our sports. We have 13 sports here. So you just want to make sure that every sport is represented because baseball is not going to have the same problems as dance or it's nice to see them come together and realize, hey, we all have the same concern about security cameras. We all have the same concern about um, graduation stalls. So it brings the sports together a little bit more too, being able to have everybody in the room at the same time, which can be a struggle with schedules. We have our first meeting tonight, so I'm hoping we have everybody there. It could be the one and only time all year, so we will find out. But you also wanna make sure that your athletes, even if the coach recommends them, that they want to be there to make an impact. They're not just going to sit there and be on their phone the whole time. We have had problems with that. And in the early years, coach says, you know, here's a, here's a senior, here's a team captain, here's somebody that, you know, may be a leader on our team, but they may not be the right person to be in ASA just because they don't feel that drive to do anything other than their sport, which is fine. You just want to make sure you have the right people. Um, and once you have the people, you want to make sure that you have goals and something to work towards. Um, what do the student athletes want to see the ASA group accomplish? So some things that we've talked about in our group is how do we want to engage with the community? So last year we did our first truck or treat event where we picked a weekend where we had volleyball, all the teams except for volleyball set up a table out in our parking lot and we had. Yep. Through, um, I'll be close the door. I'll be there in a minute. We had uh, families come through with kids and, you know, they got to meet every team had a table with a game, um, and at the end of the line, they got a ticket into the event. So it not only brought, you know, the student athletes who may not always get that exposure, like tennis and golf and track, it brought them together with the community. It then, you know, brought people in to cheer on the volleyball team that night. So that that was a good way for them to really mingle with the community. Um, do they want to be a volunteer focus group? We have, you know, we go to the food bank every year with our just our ASA group. We have the the reps work with their teams to collect toiletries when they go to hotels and bring it back and we do like a mass donation. So it's something that they start with just within the ASA group and then it does spread to the to the rest of the teams. Um, so that's a fun one. That's a newer one that we're trying out this year. And the biggest thing that the goals really focus on is the overall student athlete experience. What on our campus can we change? Can we can we add to really add to the student athlete experience? So the biggest event that our group puts on every year is our LCSBs, our student athlete award show. And they plan that from top to bottom. They work on getting nominations they vote so it's one vote per team so every rep has to be there in order to vote they work on decorations they're the ones ordering the food they put the script together um, i help with the video piece and the visual piece and some of the ordering of stuff off campus 
but you know when the lights go down and the projector kicks on they're the ones running the show and that's their favorite event of the year um, this past year they uh, we've had some pushback on campus for student athlete stoles for graduates and that's been I think the last two years it's been a really big deal for them so we were able to this past year come to a compromise and our student athletes had pins that they said that student athlete um, that they could put on their stoles excuse me so still a work in progress on that one but they were still able to see visually see that impact that they had um, I mean I have the bag of pins in my office so they're able to go hey you know we did that a student athlete designed the pin and you know she took a couple lectures back home to say hey I did that I made a difference on my campus um, we put in a snack station for student athletes to grab a snack on the way to class and then they were actually a really big part of helping us with our security cameras getting those knowing where to put those and where needs are security wise so having their reach stretch, stretch across campus you know they're going to work with the security office the president's office um, so they're meeting people across campus and their impact is impacting more than just the student athletes um, in order to have those goals though they have to be able to have a foundation and I mean those were things that we've done the last couple of years but we've had a program for seven years so the first couple of years it's really just oh, I saw a question but I'll let Sarah ask that at the end um, you have to have a foundation and on top of having the right people you have to have a structure like both Sarah and Rob talked about we also have that similar structure um, we have our president Ashley Bachman she's the chair for the Cascade and she's on the um, the national group as well we have our vice president secretary treasurer and they I have them take on a lot of ownership of the group. Um, they're the ones making the agenda. They're the ones putting together budget proposals. Obviously, you know, I help pull the numbers from our um, our systems, but we just had our booster club say, hey, we will give you $5,000, but we want to know what you want to do with it. So, you know, the ball is kind of in their court at that point saying, hey, you have this money. What do you want to do with this money? Let's put together, you know, a budget Excel sheet, but also write out so we can give it to this group saying, this is how your money is going to impact our group and our student athletes. Um, and it takes a couple of years. And I think it's knowing that it's going to take a little bit of time to get those things done. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in a year. You know, when we started talking about the stoles three years ago, those seniors said, we know that we are not going to see this, but the grades below the years below us, they're going to, it's going to be there for them. And that's why it's important with the, those, the early meetings start with a lot of talk. And that's when it comes back to the goals of don't just talk about it, actually get it done. Because if you have all these great ideas, this is where I step in a little bit and say, hey, you know, these are all great, but let's pick one thing to focus on and figure out how we're going to get it done. Who, who do we need to talk to? It's great that, you know, we want to have a full Sunday bar in the cafeteria. It's not feasible, you know, it's not beneficial necessarily. Um, so let's think about, let's come back to, you know, a snack station that we can keep in the coaches' offices that you guys can grab on the way out kind of thing. So just being able to step in and guide them just a little bit. And the biggest thing when it comes to starting up a group is having support from the administration, president's office, AD, the upstairs office here, but also the coaches, getting the coaches to buy in and see the benefit of the group. Because if a coach doesn't care about the group, they're going to rep, uh, recommend reps that may not be beneficial and then when it comes to the end and they say hey how come so and so didn't get recognized for this award or how come we didn't know this was happening well if you have people in the group that are dedicated to making the group work it's so much better so that's a huge key is getting the entire department and campus to buy into the importance of having an asa group what i got i saw there was a question there was a question and I, I, you actually dovetailed into it really beautifully, whether you knew it or not. So uh, kudos to you. Um, Tamika was just asking about the buy-in. And so I know there's other individuals on here that have conference and um, campus ASAs. The buy-in is always going to be the hardest, right? And so that's to me where you got to really kind of institutionalize your ASA and make sure that administration is buying in, whether that's the AD, um, and really also having a liaison that really is passionate about supporting this group of students. Um, you can appoint someone, but if their passion point is not really helping and supporting the ASA group achieve their goals, then you're probably not going to see much out of, um, uh, you're not going to probably see much out of your group. So 
Any other others that have ASA groups, any kind of thoughts on how you get buy-in? No other thoughts? Can you still heal me, hear me okay? Euler? I, Euler? <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you, Kate. Okay. So I don't know what I've found. Um, I, I'm not the one in charge of the uh, group student group, but it depends on who the student chair of that group is and how motivated they are to get their peers engaged. So to me, that's the way to get the students engaged if you have a really engaging student that's working on that with their peers. Yeah, and that's a great point. At the end of every year, we have um, our group vote on who's going to you know, be the, the president of ASA the next year. And we've been really lucky the last couple of years to have some really great leaders that have really taken that next step. And I think sometimes they need a little push. You know, I'll see things throughout the year. We had, um, it was a freshman last year who was really engaged in our meetings and you know, when it comes time to have people nominate each other and nominate themselves for those leadership spots, you know, secretary came around and no one's raising their hand. And I kind of just look at him and go, what about you? Would this be something you'd want to do? Or just have that conversation with them because you get to know them throughout the year. And to me, that's a piece that you have to build into your ASA as well, right? And so how do you mentor, how do you teach your student athletes, your ASA groups, your really great leaders, how to mentor the next group coming up, right? Because if they're not mentoring them, if they're not pumping them up, if they're not giving the tools that they need in order for them to kind of take over once that those seniors that are very active um, leave, then you're right. You're probably going to struggle with engagement again. So that is something that you have to be strategic about and make sure that your liaison is supporting in those efforts as well. And as Alicia stated, make sure that you have student athletes that are really bought in. They truly want to be there um, some ASAs make it something that you have to be nominated to be a part of to really ensure that those individuals want to serve on the ASA. So there's lots of different formats. I will say that's probably will always be the number one struggle is buy-in and continual engagement. But the more that you just build that into your ASA, hopefully the better your sustainability efforts will be. So, um, so I don't, I haven't seen any other questions. Um, Tamika, hopefully that answered your question. I know it's not like a definitive black and white response, but hopefully it, it's a little nugget um, insight. I see Sarah, I would, right. um, Sarah, I would add just a couple of things um, to that if I could. In, in terms of, um, I don't know that it's in incentivizing or, or buy-in, but one of the things we've done from a conference level is to make sure that we provide something to our conference level representatives where they can go back to their campus and it might elicit some conversation, whether it's a backpack with, um, with the ASA logo or a t-shirt or uh, a notebook or something that identifies them as, hey, you're part of something. Uh, and, and I know I've heard from, from many of our uh, representatives that they go back to campus and, I, and, and it does, it, it starts a conversation of, hey, what's that? And, and uh, the other thing that I would encourage people to do, not only from the conference level, but from the, the campus level, is engage your ASA leadership in maybe a staff meeting or an athletic director meeting or or whatever that might be because in many cases i think sometimes we view that as well we're always going to be having to respond to what they want or they need this or they need that in many instances they become your ally uh, the more they're informed about why the decisions are made the more they can be an ally to you with all the other student athletes and, and say, hey, um, you know, there was great thought that went into this. And let me tell you about the four or five other uh, things that uh, went into this decision. So I, I would encourage people to 
include your ASA leadership, have them come in and give a report uh, to your athletic department. Um, I've done that before at the conference level when we've been able to do that. Would have done it this week, but Ashley and and uh, and and Callie had to get back. They had to drive six hours and and get back for practice and school. But those are things that I think that you can do to continue that engagement and and tie into sustainability. Yeah, and so that was really just kind of our last piece to talk to you about what is what are some possible sustainability efforts um, and I kind of have it broke out and engage invite and then institutionalize and I think those are really the key components of ensuring that your ASA will have life or SAC or SALT or whatever it's called on your campus will have life year after year so you know as Rob already said invite you know, maybe you invite the president or the AD or the senior women leaders, coaches, ATs, whoever, and invite them into your first maybe kind of orientation ASA meeting, right? Let them kind of hear where the direction is that um, your group is going. You can engage different um, departments on your campus, dean of students, student life, ask if, you know, your ASA group can come in and kind of give an overview of what they're working on and doing. Maybe you can have a little bit of student athlete orientation to talk about the ASA group and the effort that they're doing. So the more that you can just kind of make sure that that group has a continual um, forefront and can have conversations with other um, departments or communities around your campus, then hopefully the better, you know, sustainability wise that they have in their efforts. So those are just some of the things we we definitely wanted to make sure that we left time at the end to ask any questions and we absolutely did that. So um, we would love to hear from you what kind of questions you have or, or share some things that you've done that has been successful for you. So these are just some, some questions I had maybe to engage in the conversation. So feel free to unmute or put it in the chat, whatever you're most comfortable with. can't make it that easy on us. I think the biggest challenge for me on my campus just goes back to my question is just getting the buy-in. You know, we have, we may have, I'm in charge of our ASA on our, on our campus. We have 31 teams, programs here. So everyone's very busy. Uh, an eight o'clock meeting once a month is kind of crazy and not crazy. It's hard in some of the schedules like you were talking about, Alicia. So it's just getting that buy-in and what are we uh, getting coaches to not schedule something so that their representatives can come on that first Monday or first Tuesday. So, and then just, you know, I was talking to uh, Kristen at, park it just do they offer they used to offer like a scholarship or you know a $50 something $500 scholarship something if they were participants or on the leadership board so just thinking of ideas yeah I know you gotta figure out where that money comes from but <laughs> I, I'm just trying to think ideas we got great ideas and plans but you need the bodies to run it and so that's so I tried to talk for you so it's not silent <laughs> That is, I would, that is crazy. 31, 31 teams. Wow. Um, it's, it's something we do. I mean, we don't have everybody at every meeting. Um, granted, we only have 13 teams, um, but we do host our meetings in the evening. They're uh, actually, we have our first full one of the year tonight. We do Wednesdays. Typically at seven, I say full meetings because we do meet with our exec board um, two weeks after each meeting, typically. At that point, I mean, you may, we use, um, we use Slack, we use Band for our groups to talk as well, since they can't always all be at the meetings. We've also tried the committee piece, you know, if there's something specific that your athletes are focused on, and when it comes to ASA, it's gonna be hard to get 31 people in a room at the same time in athletics, but as long as there's something they can engage with, I don't know if Sarah or Rob have any ideas for that one, but I mean, even if they can just get together as subcommittees on their own time, you know, even over Zoom, it's, it's great to be in person, but it's not always, especially in today's world, it's not always an option. And at the Cascade 
um, after doing the strategic roadmap with them and um, them focusing on, they ended up with four goals and that is pretty lofty for a group. And under each goal, they had a couple different action items um, and that's a lot. So that group decided to go ahead and move forward with subcommittees. And so those subcommittees will meet um, and, and do the work that they need to do and then come back to the larger committee and have those conversations. So it's kind of broken out and leaving it up to those student athletes to kind of navigate that subcommittee. It's their responsibility to make sure that they're meeting and um, working on the objectives that they are striving towards and then bringing that information back to the larger group. And then, you know, as a larger group, if things they're struggling, then they can, you know, utilize them as well. So unfortunately, I, I don't think there's like a one size fit all. And so definitely with that many sports and that many um, individuals that are going to be on your a ASA, that will be a struggle. But I agree with Leisha, you know, if you could just get some of them in the room and they're engaged and they're working towards your efforts, then to me, that's a win. That's that's success. Um, and then Kyle asked about where you all might pull your budgets for for the ASA. Um, I know at the previous institution that I worked at, they um, had a budget through basically student life that all the various committees and student groups were got a lump sum basically if they were um, you know a recognized committee or group on the campus and so that's where their money came from. Um, Alicia where does it come straight from your athletic budget? So it's kind of bounced around the first couple of years it was by we fundraised we would sell coupon books and then we did pull from that the same type of group where we apply for a grant from our association of the, the student body ASLCSC we're able to apply for a grant each semester for that, and we can get about a thousand dollars a semester for that. It has to be for a specific reason, though. So we have to say, yeah, you know, we're going to use this for the LCS. We're going to use this for trunk or treat. Um, but the last couple of years, we've really made it a goal to have money set aside from the department that's specifically allocated to um, ASA. But with that came the responsibility of, okay, we're going to give you these funds. What is your plan for these funds? You know, we have to. We have a budget spreadsheet that they've been working off of. And then the same thing for the money that was just donated by our booster club. You know, we're going to give you this money, but, you know, we want to see a budget. Can I, can I offer up a couple questions real quick? <clears throat> um, first, what kind of budget did you have? What did you spend your dollars on? And can you guys share with us the best things you've done on campus as an ASA? So, um, sorry, can you say the first part of that question again? Um, what kind of a budget did you have? So was it $1,000 or $4,000? What did you spend that money on? And what were the best things that you guys did as an ASA? So we started with, I mean, through our ASLCSC, our association, the student body, um, ASB, we were able to get between five hundred and thousand dollars per request, so we could request that each semester. Um, but that had to be again specifically allocated to you know we need seven hundred and fifty dollars for decorations uh, for our trunk retreat or to put towards food towards our award show. So that was really specific to that group. Um, our budget was usually within three to four thousand um, dollars. That was before we got this donation this past year. And a lot of those go towards our award show. It's the biggest event that our ASA group puts on every year is our LCSB is our award show. And that money goes towards uh, food was the biggest cost this past year because we're really trying to, to dress up the event and make it more of an event instead of just showing up, watching a video and leaving. Um, decorations, awards, those, you know, cost a few hundred dollars. So that was probably our biggest expense this past year. And then this year we're looking to get t-shirts for all of our reps. Um, just so that they can all, you know, have something to wear proudly that says, you know, LC State ASA on it. Getting polos for our um, our exec board for when they go to events. So like when Ashley and Callie went to the Cascade Conference meetings next year, the hope is that our reps are in matching LC State ASA polos. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing that we put our money towards for sure is the LCSBs. And we're looking into um, some leadership training. I know Rob and Sarah brought up some really good ideas this past weekend at our conference meeting. And, you know, using that money to bring in, you know, a guest speaker or some kind of training for, for our group, whether it's leadership training or mental health resources, anything that we can use to kind of start our meetings, it's going to benefit 
the ASA group that they can then take back to their teams. But yeah, we, it took a couple of years to really establish that budget. Did that answer your question? Yeah. How about anybody else on the call? Um, just what's the, what's the best thing you guys have done as an ASA? Hey, Ted, this is Regan over at College of Idaho. One of the things that I've encouraged our group to do, um, sometimes we get a little off track on our spending and one program asks for something that every program would need. Um, so if I've got two different approaches. One, is there a way that it's impactful for all of the athletes, the entire student body, something valuable to the campus, um, which is, and then I don't go with just one budget line item for that. So if our ASA can come up with some funding, if they can come up with a third, I can come up with a third, and then I can get one of my fundraising accounts to come up with the other third. Um, so kind of divide and conquer has allowed us to do some bigger things. Like we put um, a sound system in the weight room last year. Um, this year, at the end of the year, we had some, we had uh, funds left over. We partnered with our um, Student Government Association, our program council, some of the other student organizations that had some funding left at the end of the year, and then some of our fundraise dollars, and we we're putting in, um, we're replacing some old tennis courts with a couple sport courts. It'll be a basketball court and two pickleball courts. But again, the more you can divide and conquer, I think you can make more of an impact. And then your your students see that that working together with your constituents across campus can really move the needle for some things. Um, there was a, another, oh, was someone else going to say something? Sorry, yeah, this is Tracy Gaston at Woods. I, um, a lot of the ideas are very similar that we have here. Um, one thing that we've, um, our group started our um, Al's Choice Awards. So that's, that's a big, that's our big thing and our big event. And they run it um, from MC it, everything. They start to finish. They decide all those things, which we think is great because it gets more involvement versus kids coming and slouching down and you know, listening to other sports get recognized. Um, but um, we also did like um, task, uh, uh, graduation stoles. That was an ASA idea um, that happened for like all athletes. And um, like when we just do something little, a little thing, it becomes big. And then you get more people that want to actually get involved in the ASA. But like everyone else, I mean, we're meeting at seven in the morning or at nine at night because of classes and, and practice schedules. And I mean, then you have the challenge of people wanting to be there. Thank you, Tracy. Um, Alicia, there was a question in the chat. So um, one directed at you. Can you talk about exactly how the voting process works for your particular ASA? How do you vote on your chairs and how often do you have terms? So we do it every year. Um, we've had, we've only had one president that since I've been here, um, that served multiple years, but at the end of the year, it was the same process. You know, is there anybody you know, we ask? You know, would you like to remain in this spot? We go through like we talked about the Roberts rules. Um, and it's a nomination process. And so, last year, our secretary and vice president, who are I know our secretary and treasurer, who are currently our vice president and president, Callie and Ashley, Rob, Sarah, who you guys got to meet, um, they knew it was coming up, and they looked at each other said, "I'll nominate you for this if you nominate me for this," but we knew going in that they were going to be the right ones for the job. And sometimes they really just need that extra push. If no one gets nominated or nominates himself, just because it's kind of an awkward thing to do at times, you kind of just got to push them. Or like I, you know, there was a golfer. I said, so-and-so you're, you know, you've got a few years left and you've done well in here. Would you be interested in being nominated for this position? Um, and then it's, it's just a vote. The students each get one vote when it comes to voting for, um, our exec board for the next year. So. Yeah, and our national ASA works very similar. So we can, uh, they vote every year. Um, a repeat chair can decide to chair again, do back to back, but it is a revote every single year. 
And if you want to be chair of our national ASA, you have to go in front of your peers and basically got, kind of give them your campaign spit, uh, speech. And so you can uh, put that out there and then your their peers vote. So you can't vote for yourself, So, uh, but everybody votes. And so that's kind of how we decide. I will say we always have a lot of students that want to nominate themselves and volunteer after going to the convention. So that's kind of our culminating event for our national ASA is that we, the NAI pays for them to come to the national convention every year. Obviously schedules allowing, you know, we do have some students that are in sports. So sometimes, unfortunately, they aren't able to join us, but we have the majority of them come and that's kind of like their culminating event together and their one time that they're together in person. After that convention, um, and then we break for summer, we have always a handful of students that come back and they want to be the chair after going to convention and having such a positive experience the previous year. Um, so that's been really good for us and they've always been incredible leaders. So we've been really fortunate to have that the last several years for our national ASA. And then Ashley, I saw your question about the voting for awards. I mean, it's pretty simple. We have each team put in their nominations. Each one team gets a vote. So if there's two baseball players, the team gets one vote, they'll do it together. And if something just looks wonky, like you know this person should not have won, that's kind of where we step in and use our better judgment. But I can give you more info on that if you want to email me and we can talk that out too, just to go over how we do our process. All right. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to myself. I'm sure Alicia and Rob, we can put our contact information in the chat um, and you can reach out to us at any time. As Rob said, you know, for our um, conferences that are looking to start, I know most of you already have them. Um, I'm more than happy to come and, and support you in your efforts. Or if you're trying to get your campus, please, please, please reach out. I'm more than happy to support you um, and, and help you guide through that process. So. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it.